All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure DWM through config.h. Um, a lot of people get intimidated by DWM and really others talk with software because they use um, they use their source code to configure their programs, but I assure you it's really not hard. You don't even need to know C to really do it. It's very easy. Um, I mean, if you know C, you can do some crazy changes. Like my personal copy of DWM has some pretty wild changes, like um, like compile time theming and all that. But you really don't need any of that because all of the um, all the code they have in config.h is very clean. It's very simple, written in basically plain English. Um, good stuff. And compiling DWM only takes maybe 15 seconds. On like an old CPU or something like that. Like I have a Pentium 4 on the old machine here that takes maybe 20-25 seconds to compile it. So it really compiles on a big deal. It's it's very easy. So um, if you fall in the last video, this might look a little bit different to you. That's because this is my DW um sorry my Debian virtual machine, not my Ubuntu one because I'm not a fan of Ubuntu. But the process is the same. I did the same process on this machine. So if you're following from the last video, you know where we have our source code of DWM installed. So what I want you to do is install a more up-to-date version of DWM through um, off of Suckless's website. Now, I'm not going to do that again because I've already done that, but um, you can just do a wget just like this and then once that's done downloading tar xvfz period forward slash dwm tab 6.2 and autocomplete and hit enter let it extract and then once you do all that again I'm not doing this I've already done this um, off camera to save some time, but once you cha change directory into that and copy paste the config defaults to config.h, right? And so in Sukla software, they have two config files config.def.h, which are the defaults. You do not want to change this, this only exists as a reference and as a backup in case you destroy your config file by accident or something like that. Um, you shouldn't change config.def.h really at all. But um, once you make the copy, you should be good to go. You'll never need to change config.def anyway. In fact, if you don't have a, a config.h file, the make file will automatically, when you compile, will automatically replace your config, or sorry, copy your co uh, config.def.h to config.h and make it for you. So open up config.h in your tech editor. We're going to go down the line and I'll explain to you every single config file, uh, I'm sorry, every single line in the config file that will matter. There's some that don't matter and you can just skip those. Um, I'll point it out when it comes up. So, go to the top of the screen here. So, starting at the top. That's annoying. Starting at the top. Um, again, if you don't know C, you can just ignore these static const, unsigned int, static const int, blah 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 stuff. This just basically means like what type of data we're putting here. And you can just leave those alone. Alright, just follow the pattern they set. So, border pixel is the width in pixels of the border around um, a window, right? I mean, you probably can't see it here because it's so small. I've opened more windows here. And I, like, cycle around. You can see a little blue line around these windows. Yeah, that's, that's the border, and if you change that to a different value, it'll be bigger or smaller. But... You can't get much smaller than one. Um, snap pixel, that will be the um, snapping that the tiles do. 
while you're tiling. So I believe only multiples of 32 in this case. Um, show bar. So the comments here also explain this. Um, right now it's one, so we have a bar up here. If you hit zero, it'll be there'll be no bar up here, or at least by default. Um, there's a hockey by default, I believe, to toggle the bar, but we'll get to that. Top bar. So again, comment here, very self-explanatory. If it's one, the bar is up here. If it's zero, the bar is down here. That that's all it means. Fonts. So this is going to be these these brackets here. That basically means like a list, right? And the reason why, so, so first and foremost, the first font here, monospace, will be the one we're going to use for basically everything. If, if DWM finds a character that is not in the current font, then what's going to do is it'll go to the next font, which I'll show you how to make more fonts or um, add more fonts in a second here. But if you have like a window or something with like Arabic characters or like, acrylic or like Chinese characters or really any non-Latin characters this will come up this will come up for you more often or if you want people who have like nerd fonts with like icons and stuff in the title bar this will come up for you but otherwise you can just use one font and that'll be that um, to find fonts you can use your DWM and really all suckless software um, just run FC list Actually, pipe that into less so you can scroll up and down with J and K. Um, and this stuff over here, all this stuff over here are the name of fonts you can use. So, in this case, I could add, say, Deja Vu Sans Mono, just something random. And you can ignore the colon style part, that really doesn't apply here. You can add that if you want, but most of the time it doesn't matter. So, this name here before the colon is what you want to add in to DWM. So Deja Vu Sans Mono, capitalization doesn't matter, this is Linux. And keep in mind that this colon size is fairly important. Um, these, This stuff up here is actually pretty small, so I'm going to make this one say 16. And I'm going to go back and make this one 16 as well. So if I were to compile this as is, uh, also one more thing, um, when you download the source code, open uh, config.mk and your prefix should say something like user dash local, just delete the slash local part so it just says slash user. That way it installs to the same place our dev package did that we made earlier from uh, app source. So we're replacing the same binaries. We don't have like two binaries of the same thing and it's a huge mess. Just do that, make install. And if I restart DWM, whoops, then our fonts should be much bigger. Yep. There you go. Um, there's no real place for me to demonstrate this other font I installed, but uh, I assure you, if we get some wacky character that's not in monospace but in Deja Vu Sans, you'll see it. So next on the menu, D menu font. This is for like a command later down the line. Um, same idea, except you only have one font for this, so. Be careful what you pick. Um, if it's not, if it's not in, if the character is not in this font, it'll just be like a square. Um, color gray, color gray two, color gray three, four, cyan. So basically, these are just like variables for colors. These these exact names don't really matter. This just also just comes into play in this next part here. Um, colors. So. You have scheme normal and scheme selected. Um, scheme selected effect is the, are the colors for what is currently being selected. So in this case, well, I'll use this up here example. The foreground, so the font, 
is this like light, very light gray, almost white color. The background is cyan, which more like a deep, weird blue, but anyway. And the border of a selected window is cyan, which again, you can hardly see. If I make this bigger, actually, like a lot bigger. You can see this better. Yeah, so now you can see, if I open more windows, this fat, fat border around it. Um, I don't hardly remember the default box for DWM now. Um, yeah, you can see that the foreground affects the, the font color of what's being selected of uh, this BG background and the border. And same thing for scheme normal. This is for stuff that's not selected. So as you can see, this stuff over here is a slightly darker gray because it's not selected. The background's gray and the border of unselected windows are gray. So... You can play around with that. That's what most of Rising is, playing with those colors there. Um, tags. So this is the name of the tags. So tags are basically like workspaces. So you can have like, I don't know, one thing here and then like another thing here. But the thing with DWM is that tags are more powerful than workspaces because they're not they're not mutually exclusive. And I'll show you what I mean soon. We'll get we'll get to that in a second. Um, so, so the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the names of the tags. You can change it to whatever you want. You can make it A, B, C. This is one of those only cosmetic changes and won't really matter. Um, this just are, this is basically just a rising thing. This this has very little to do with um, actual pragmatic use. Um, rules. I'm going to link to the Suckless website's uh, explanation on these because this is nearly a whole video in and of itself. Basically, I don't like how it's called rules. It's more of an exception. Everything by default tiles like this, unless you're using a different layout, which we'll get to in a second. Um, what these basically mean is, so if you have GIMP open, which is a GNU image manipulation program, um, it'll be floating no matter what. And it can be on whatever, whatever workspace. You open Firefox, it'll be on a certain tag by default. But uh, yeah, I'll link to um, the Suckless Wiki. I'm sorry, Suckless website um, on information on that because this stuff's almost an entire video itself. It's if 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 in doubt, just comment it out. To be honest, this this stuff right here is not not that useful. I don't think. Oh, it's like the dogs are barking. All right. Um. So next we have M fact. Again, the comments explain most of this. So DDM is, DWM separates all the windows into a stack, right? And there's master windows and there's slave windows. The master window takes up the lion's share of the screen and the slave windows take up a smaller part. The idea being you're only gonna focus on one window at a time. So you can scroll up and down and by default, it's your mod key, which I'll get to in a second. Um, enter to pick a different one to bring to the front and J and K cycle through them. Um, what mfact does here is it determines the ratio or the percentage of the um, uh, display that the master window takes, right? So you can see this terminal now is the new master window, and it takes about 55% of the display because it is set to 0.55 number master so you can have multiple master windows taking up like the majority of the screen uh, I leave that as one um, 
resize him, so I gotta worry about that. That basically just means like be nice to certain windows when they want to resize, but who cares? Um, layouts, layouts, you won't really be changing unless you're patching, but that's a video for another time. Uh, basically, the first one to find here is going to be your default one. So in this case, tiled, which is what we're doing right now. Tiling. Um, the fish, so no layout, is floating. And um, this one down here, monocle, is basically full screen. So I've opened a few windows here. Mod M, full screen, vector tiling, mod fish. I can just drag them around wherever. You don't really use it that often. Um, so mod key, uh, by default from the source code, this is mod one mask, meaning um, this is, your mod key is uh, alt, left alt. Sorry about that. Your mod key is left alt. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this one you don't have to worry about super a lot. Just really, your mod key is the button you hold down when you want to run a DWM command. 99% of the time, really 100% of the time, if you're doing something sane. But um, the two options you need to care about is if you're okay with left alt being your mod key, just leave it as is. If you want it to be the, um, the Windows key, sorry, meta key, change it to four. Um, I'm running a virtual machine right now. I don't want this to conflict with my, um, my host machine, my host machine's key binds, which uses... Uh, the meta key, the Windows key, for um, for its mod key. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Tag keys. So basically, one thing about DWM is pretty cool. I mentioned this earlier. They have tags, not workspaces. And the way those work is basically like you can have a window, you can have multiple quote unquote workspaces tags in view on the uh, screen at a time. You can also have multiple. Um, uh, a window on multiple tags at once. So this is why you might see like certain people who use this have a bunch of icons for tags, kind of like categories of programs they have open, because they really use like multiple tags at once, stuff like that. Um, I don't use it that often, but if I were to do, for example, so mod key, again, my case is alt, left alt. And, um, just a mod key and one, two, three, four, and so on. By default, I can swap between these tags and view one at a time. If I want to, whoops, view multiple ones at the same time, I can hit the toggle view button, which is mod key and control mask. So mod and control and toggle, whoops multiple tags at once. If I want to move a window between to another tag exclusively, so just this window on one tag, uh, meta, sorry, mod, shift, number, so this is on four now, back to one. And if I want to toggle viewing multiple, I'm sorry, if I want to toggle this window on multiple tags at once, I can do uh, mod, control, shift, I'll put some two and three. And now I can, yeah, now this one window is on multiple pages, which you could, which it could be potentially useful if you're like working on a document or something and you want to like switch between like the preview or, or like say you're a web developer and like you want to switch between the view of like have like Firefox over here or like Chrome and two different tags. So that's a reason why this type of, um, oops, this type of um, window manager is uh, popular developers. You can do a lot of crazy stuff like that with it. Um, this here is actually not very useful for us. This is for like old configs. Same with D menu mon. That's um, 
not for old, not for old configs, but basically like um, but basically um, it's for this next line down here. It basically just means like use whatever monitor we're currently on. You can ignore that. D menu CMD. So this this is basically like a um, a list of words that go into a command. So in this case, you can see like D menu font from earlier is here. D menu mon from earlier is here. Uh, color gray one, color gray three, so on. Um, the terminal command, which in my case is st. I installed st, the simple terminal. That's another video for another time. Their config's pretty similar to this, very self-explanatory. But um, if I wanted to add a command here, the easy way, I would just copy and paste this, and let's say, I don't know, um, let's say I want, a, I want a button to open Vim. So each of these, so inside this bra these brackets, each of these things in double quotes, followed by a comma, is one word in our command. So, so for, if I wanted to run Vim inside ST and have it on a hotkey for later, which I'll show you how to do that in a second. So st execute vim save that and I'll call it vim cmd. Oops. And that's basically how you um, make new commands or for like executing things. Um, for your key binds, and I'll show you how to do that in a second because that's a very next category. Um, you can even see this D menu command in action here. If I hit mod P, oops, forgot Alt. Yeah, it's basically like a like a desktop menu. Um, I don't have anything installed here. Just run next term or something. But so this next section here is probably the one you're gonna be messing with the most, assuming you're not a ricer. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. So basically, this is a list of like uh, key binds. So in this case, let's read from left to right. You're holding down mod key, and you hit P. Then we will spawn um, whatever D menu command does. Right? If you're holding down mod key, and so this this operator here basically means and, which is like we have to hit shift and backspace, or sorry, backslash. Hit, holding on mod key and shift and you hit return you will spawn a terminal that's um, probably the most useful thing to know about um, when you're just starting out with the DWM you need to have a, a terminal set up for this which reminds you of one useful change I gotta get to in a second if you're gonna be running this on, D on Debian or Debian based systems like Ubuntu because uh, their terminal they have this system link X terminal emulator which is basically a sim link towards like whatever, um, whichever terminal you have. Uh, real quick, I believe it's dpackage, no, update alternatives, config x terminal emulator. And basically it just lets you swap between, your swap your preferred terminal emulator very quickly. You don't have to recompile ST or stuff like that and programs will mostly respect it. Um, so going back here, let's replace term CMD with X terminal emulator. So going back to this, this is mostly self-explanatory, but let's say I wanted to make a, a new command where I spawn Vim like this one I made here, right? What I would do, first I would check if there's anything using V. I'm going to bind this to mod V. I'm going to copy this line with mod and p paste it change x key xk v so x or keyboard v <laughs> sorry from x keyboard p to x keyboard v to vim cmd i've recorded this video like five times and something kept going wrong every single time so my voice starting to give out um Yeah, so all these are default keybinds. This would be pretty easy to explain, to uh, read. Toggle bar, you know, toggles the bar. Focus stack, 
one, focus stack minus one, that cycles, increase number of master windows, one minus one, again, very obvious. Set M factor, we, we, we read this up before, M factor determines how big your master windows are, or window, and so on and so forth. Reading, reading and learning your default keybinds for DWM would be an exercise left to the viewer because if I were to go through all of these, this video would be a lot longer than it should be. Again, tag keys, switching stuff, mod key, shift, Q, quit. Now these are um, these are mouse uh, keybinds, not necessarily uh, whoops, not uh, keyboard binds. Um, you can leave these alone. I've never messed with these before. Um, excuse me. Yeah, I, I don't mess with these at all because I use my keyboard all the time. I touch my mouse when I'm using DWM, so. Again, if you really want to change these, this is exercise left for the viewer. I think these are kind of not very useful, but, uh. Yeah, so once you're done configuring DWM, uh, run make to ensure that it works. And in this case, I made a mistake here. So, empty initializer braces under rules. Oh, you know what? When I change this, I must have... We're going to uncomment that for now. That's not that important. Um... So, I suppose DWM cannot do empty stuff. I just did that. Zero or negative. Whatever. Um, I'm just going to leave these rules as default. Because I have not messed with these rules in a long time. I haven't done C in a long time either, now that I think about it. But yeah, once you make a change to your config, run make, run make install, and your changes should be set. So I'm going to restart DWM here, so I can show you my new keybind I just made with a mod V. So mod V, and Vim opens, easy peasy. And uh, yeah, that's the DWM um, config.h, uh, pretty simple. Uh, you have to do some experimentation on your own to uh, really all learn the ins and outs of it. But like with most things, um, it's an exercise left to the reader. Um, a lot of things, sorry to the viewer. Um, yeah, I'd reckon if you're using DWM, you're not the type of person who needs to be spoon-fed everything. But um, new users are always good in a project like DWM. So I think by... Um, explaining the config and stuff like that. It's less intimidating. Um, I believe that's everything off my checklist. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.